Hello and welcome to the Zonta Club of Santa Clarita Valley's Life Forwards Workshop, How to Cook on a Budget and Eat Healthy, presented by Beth Heiserman from Vineyard Cooking. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for this workshop. I'd like to recognize that our past international president, Diane Curtis, is with us today. Welcome, Diane. I'm Nicole Miller, president of the Zonta Club of Santa Clarita Valley. Um, and if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat. Please send any questions during the presentation to the chat, submit questions here. To make all of our guests comfortable today while we record this workshop, we have privacy settings. So feel free to click on your stop video to disable your camera. This presentation will be recorded live on Facebook and will be uploaded and available to view on our website and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe our, our videos. Please feel welcome to share this video with friends and family. And we are requesting that everyone remain muted. It will only record the host. Please uh, visit our past workshops on our website at scvzonta.org. And now I present Phyllis Walker, Chair of our Life Forward Committee. So I would like to say welcome everyone to this exciting Life Forward workshop, How to Cook on a Budget and Eat Healthy. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker, Chef Beth Heiserman. In the 1980s, Beth's family owned a restaurant in the San Fernando Valley. She helped out in the bakery where she baked rolls and helped to create desserts. But that wasn't the start of her love of being in the kitchen. Her grandma and mom always were in the kitchen cooking something yummy. She remembers her grandma's mossy green step stool she sat on and watched while she cooked as she learned how to bake many treats. In 1998, Beth was a private chef for many years where she would prepare meals that were healthy and tasty. She enjoys designing healthy meals on a budget. Creating food that tastes good with the identical items and multiple dishes takes flair. She began work for a local winery in 2011 and began writing blogs in 2013 for their website and published in a local paper. As executive chef, she catered many events and assisted with the winemaking process, from harvesting the grapes to bottling the wine and sales in the tasting room. I remember, personally remember, Beth's yummy cupcakes shared at Zonta events, so different and mouth-watering. And now, Beth, the stage is yours to share your expertise and help us learn how to prepare yummy meals on a budget. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. So let me share my screen. I have a little presentation. Present. Can we see my screen? Yes, fabulous. So a little bit of cooking with Beth. How to cook on a budget and still eat healthy. One cannot think well, live well, sleep well, if one has not dined well. This is a quote from Virginia Woolf from A Room of One's Own. It came from two lectures that she did in 1928. She discussed the new woman. It's about the lack of opportunity for women rather than the distant absence of talent. Today, we have many opportunities. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about me, I'm going to learn who I am and where I got to this point in my life. Talk a little bit about how to plan meals in advance. Don't get caught up in name brands using the bulk bins. Focusing on items you can use multiple uses from and don't fall for shortcuts. Who am I and where did my love of cooking and baking start? I'm gonna say it was more of baking than anything. I loved bake and I know if anybody knows me, we, which we all talked about earlier in my cupcakes, but I do a lot of bread. I do other things. I love to do everything in the kitchen. It actually relaxes me, which a lot of people don't realize that because everybody always says you do so much, but I have learned that when I'm in the kitchen, it relaxes me. I take my mind off of things and I feel better. So 
First, I'm going to just share about four influential women in my life. My mom is on the far left in orange. My grandma, my Aunt Anne, and my bubby, my great-grandmother. I will tell you, it was kind of hard to find photos <laughs> that really um, made me emotional when I went through things to share who they were as women and what they did in my life. They were all, um, my Aunt Anne didn't cook, but she sewed and she did many other crafty things. And I'm going to start with her. And the one thing that I always remember with my Aunt Anne was having tea and making cookies or biscuits so that we would enjoy our tea. And I always remember that as a child sitting in my room on the floor and she would try to get on the floor to my height and we would enjoy it. And I got to tell you, it was one of the biggest memories that I have that are good memories. And then of course I have my grandmother, which Phyllis mentioned the green stool. And I tried really hard to find some photos this week of that green stool. And I guess it seemed like every time I found photos, everybody was standing where the green stool was, taking a photo of the rest of the room of everybody in it. It was right at the end of the kitchen. So when everybody would gather and eat where the dining room was, everybody must have been standing there. Now, when I was little, because we only had so many chairs at the table, that was what I sat on when we would eat dinner, when we had more than the six people that would join us. So that was one of the biggest things. And I always remember, we also had a, another chair that I would kind of kneel on so that I could get to the height of the kitchen, like of the counters and where the sink was and got to watch my grandmother prepare everything. One of the other true memories that I have of my grandmother on the dining room table where she would clear it off completely when she would make strudel. And it became the entire countertop because in the kitchen wasn't big enough to make it. I remember that as a kid. And then of course my mom in the kitchen and I always remember her saying, don't touch, <laughs> gotta put it away, gotta clean it up. Those were things of my mom, but Slowly, she went through and shared a lot of things with me. A little bit about me and how I got here besides the influential women in my life and why I'm here. So back in the 80s, it was mentioned that my dad had a restaurant in the Valley and we served burgers. We made our own rolls and we had a section that had, that was, it was where you would go up, you would order your food and then we would call um, like your number or the number, your, you would have a number at your table and then we would bring your food to you. And then we had a separate section where if you wanted to have beverages or desserts. And that was a section where we made all our rolls and I got to make desserts. And that's the passion that I absolutely can't stop. <laughs> I love making dessert. We all know that. Um, and then I have that obsession that I have to eat most of it too, which is not always a good thing, but I do. And I'm going to share that I got to make different types of ice creams. So that was another thing that we got to make because when you have cake, you got to have ice cream with it, right? And milkshakes, and we did all kinds of wonderful things. And so at that point, when I started to kind of look through things and I started to actually write down stuff where a lot of times people who cook don't always write down recipes or they write chicken scratch. And go to my next slide. I was going through some of my mom's cookbooks and she had a section where she had all of her like a coupon book, but it had little recipes put in it that all her friends gave her, you know. And what I noticed is that there's two that I wrote when I was in high school. And I was actually really shocked that they were even there. And I went, oh my goodness, they were on little, you know, three by five cards. And I remember as a kid, like watching Julia Child and writing down trying to write down what she wrote 
And I used to enjoy that. I remember sitting there um, Saturday mornings, like after cartoons, <laughs> I would sit there afterwards watching Julia Child and on PBS and they would have a whole line of cooking shows. And I remember doing that so much and getting so into it and, and how much I loved absorbing the information. And I'm very detail oriented. So I tend to probably do too much sometimes when it comes to that. And I took notes. I remember having a notebook and taking all kinds of notes of what to do. Now, when I was in high school, we had an opportunity to take cooking, but I didn't. It was not offered to me. Um, they offered sewing and metalworking and woodworking and printing. And I got to do all kinds of other things, but cooking was not an option for me for some reason, but I still wanted to learn. And so I took the time outside of school to educate myself and learn how to do it. Now I'm gonna share on the right side. This is one of my mom's cookbooks. And we all do this sometimes where we put little place markers and, and it made me emotional because I remember my mom preparing and the one dish that was on here was the baked spaghetti. And I just wanted to show that. It was kind of fun to see that and to go through some of her other books as to what she used to prepare. And I've realized I do that too, right? I put little bookmarks and things and, and to see and to remember and to go back and, and to kind of twist the actual recipe. So I don't always use what's in a book, but I use what I like, right? Because sometimes we don't always have ingredients or we don't want to go out and buy it or it's not always easy to find. And so sometimes I do that. I play around with stuff. Now, go to the next screen here. I'm going to share a few little photos of my family and me growing up and to see a little bit of who I am. The picture that I have actually of my mom on the bottom was the last picture we took of her before she passed away. And it's, it's a very emotional thing for me to see because it was the last time. And I remember sitting with my mom knowing that she was going to pass away. And there were certain recipes and things that she never actually wrote down and she didn't really share, like Thanksgiving. And she always made something that it was probably my ultimate favorite thing. Like I would want to eat them year round, but it was so labor intensive. Or I'm gonna say at least she made it think that it was, right? It was her stuffing and she made them into balls. So they're like big meatballs, but that was made of stuffing. And it was one of the things that I absolutely loved. And this picture was taken um, a week before Thanksgiving. And I remember, um, helping her for the very first time in my life to make the stuffing other than just shredding the bread because that would be the only thing she allowed me to do ever I, it was her kitchen you couldn't get in the kitchen ever you could watch from the other side but I wasn't allowed to really help with stuff I could watch like I said so and she didn't really ever write stuff down and that year she made extra and we froze it and then the following Thanksgiving we shared the last one me and my stepdad and I kind of deconstructed it where I have now figured out what she did but I remember sitting there with her one night and it was like I remember it like it was yesterday we were watching Law and Order that I do remember and she kind of said you know I guess I never wrote down stuff to pass down to you and she started to share the last three weeks of her life recipes that she never wanted to share. And so I now have all those with my grandmother and my great grandmother. I was fortunate because they wrote everything down on three by five cards, everything, everything you can imagine. We had recipes. I have recipes that have been handed down from three, 400 years in our family that we still make today that I make today, right? Including my great grandmother's rolling pin that is actually over 400 years old that I use every time I make bread. It's one of those things that it makes you very emotional. You remember your family and you remember the good times of why it's so important of being in the kitchen, right? So why the need to be healthy? 
It reduces health issues, lowers your stress, boosts your immunity, loses weight, boosts brain function. I'm gonna talk first about reducing health issues. So when I was 33 years old, I suffered a stroke. And then a few months later, I had another. It wasn't necessarily what I ate. It was the stress in my life. And I will tell you that I went on a campaign and I tried my hardest to reduce all the stress in my life. And there was a lot. I worked for someone who I couldn't stand. I worked for a company that I absolutely loved where I worked. And I remember my boss coming to me, telling me, you're going to want to quit soon. Things are going to change. They ended up demoting him. They hired someone else. And the new boss, when he came in, was horrible. It was probably the worst experience of my life. And I stayed an extra two years while I was looking to do something else. But in that time, I ended up having a few others, which they call TIAs, which are trans ischemic strokes, attack strokes. And the very first one that I did have when I was 33 affected my vision. So everything that I see, I see double now, and I still do, and I always will. It'll never change. And it's created a lot of other health issues. I get severe migraines and many, many other problems. And so when this happened, um, the health insurance that I have required, I'm going to say required me and definitely pressured me into taking courses that they offered on how to eat healthy and how to make sure your stress is lowered, how to boost your immunity and to do all of these really positive things for yourself. And it was a 12 week course. I had to go once a week for four hours. And at first it was very strenuous. It was very stressful. Of course, they wanted you to do that to remove it, but that's not what happened at all. <laughs> and eventually it did. And it, it trained me on how I need to eat and what I need to look for when I am preparing food. Now I'm gonna do a quick poll in the, the chat if everybody can um, answer. Who eats out? How many times do you prepare food at home? Do you eat out? Do you do a half and half thing? Do you purchase food from the market that is kind of pre-made and it tells you like mixes where it tells you to add a meat or a protein, or do you buy stuff in the counter where all you have to do is put it in the oven? So I'm gonna have you guys share that. I'm gonna stop my screen so I can kind of see how we're doing. And I'm gonna say when most people tend not to look at the nutrition, right? And I do see, you know, some people cook from scratch, eat out on weekends, maybe once a week. So a little bit of everything, which is normal because we all need a variety, right? So I was put on where I had to look at my nutritional facts. And that's something that I'm gonna ask everybody if you guys wanna put in the chat also. How many people actually look at your products at the nutrition and to see how much fat, saturated fat, sodium, sugar, carbs, right? I remember before my mom passed away about three years prior before they actually diagnosed her correctly, um, they had her change her diet to her carbs and she had to have X amount of carbs per day. She was on hundred carbs per day, per day, which is not a whole lot of food. When they changed my diet, I was on a diet of about 1500 milligrams of sodium. And I needed to watch how much fat intake and saturated fat. And I was supposed to watch 
they didn't really tell me as much on saturated fat, but they told me on total fat, I needed to be under 50 per day. So just imagine going like into a fast food place. I'm going to just share if anybody doesn't realize this, which I'm seeing some giggles on there, is that when you go out to a fast food place, a hamburger, fries, and a drink is your entire day worth of food. So you're going to hit your maximum sodium, your fat, your saturated fat, your sugars, your carbs. You're going to hit it all in one meal. So what do you eat the rest of the day if you, you ate it all in one meal? It's really hard to do. And this class that I took kind of showed me, even if you eat out, what foods help you determine what would keep you within that number, right? And there are different dieting companies and organizations and different places that kind of have point system and number systems and all that. But sometimes it doesn't always give you food that has flavor too, right? Because diet, what is diet? <laughs> diet usually removes the sugar, removes the flavor. It removes some of the fats. And sometimes what happens is they replace it with other things. And sometimes they're not natural things, they're chemicals. And chemicals aren't good for you either, because that's not good for your immunity. It's not good for your health. And so I have learned that sometimes eating real sugar or real fat is healthier. It's just not, you can't do in excess, right? Yes, so would you like me to read yes. the, would you like me to read the yes. chats for you? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I'll go through and read them all. <laughs> Um, maybe once I could go on and on and that's where Nicole is going to help me. <laughs> so I don't go on and on. Maybe once a week I eat out with friends, cook from scratch, eat out on the weekends, a little bit of everything, make most meals by scratch at home, order out for delivery once a week, eat out once a week, cook from scratch only, eat out only about one time per month, cook at home and eat out once a week. Eat out once a week, buy some Trader Joe's fresh foods two to three times from scratch. I look at everything. I look at everything that was <laughs> echoed a few times. Um, I eat out and snack at home. Do not prepare big meals. Need to look more. Um, always look at the nutrition labels. Avoid saturated fat and high sodium. I always check the carbs and fat and sodium. I rarely buy prepackaged foods. I cook a lot and eat out maybe one day a week. Uh, we get takeout one to two times per week. We do a 50-50 combination of partially prepared and meals cooked from scratch. Um, true, somebody agree with you. Um, almost everything has sugar in it, sugar and salt. Um, and then I read everything on, I read everything on packages. I cook and we also order out. So yes, and, and that is where it's so important, especially because we're in an age of so many chemically treated foods, not just when they're processed in a plant, but when they're also grown. So you have your, you know, genetically modified foods, which sometimes is okay, it's not okay, but it could also make differences in your health later in life, right? So do we all make a plan? So when we're getting ready to go to the market, how many of us, and this is another question I'm gonna get everybody to do, how many of us actually make a plan? How many of us actually write on paper, before I go to the market, what do I want? Or do we go when we're hungry? Because then we all know that's really bad. Because <laughs> sometimes we come home with a lot more stuff than we actually wanted. And then it kind of gets thrown in the back of the refrigerator, in the back of the cabinet, we forget about it, or it just goes bad and then we have to throw it away. So how many of us make a plan before we go to the market and really know what we want? So if you guys fill that out in the chat. And Christine, do you have a question? Or are you no, just I was just yes. going to say, I make a plan, but <laughs> as you mentioned, I'll walk by strawberries or I'll walk by something that's on sale and I bring it home and I don't always have a, a place in, in a meal that I'm making yeah. for those garlic knots or you know, <laughs> something that I was not included, but I have to do it. So impulse buying is a, a bad thing, but I it do is. menu plan. I do do that. Fabulous. Nicole, you want to read what everybody kind of wrote? Sure. Um, 
and let me find where we left <laughs> off here. Um, I write day meal plans and then buy based on the plan. Um, somebody says rarely they make a plan. 100% um, of the time I put my list together on the phone, on my phone, <laughs> I make a list, but still end up throwing a, a lot away or forgetting about it. I sort of make a plan as I order 80% of groceries online. I plan every recipe for the week. Then I don't waste food or time probably saves me money too. I have to take into consideration my uh, snacks for lunches for my daughter. I try not to go when I'm hungry because when I do, I want everything <laughs> same. I write a list and pretty much stick with it. I do make a plan. <laughs> Fabulous. So my next question to everybody is how many of us actually look at the market ads that come out each week? I mean, now virtually we get stuff online. So I like to look at them online. We have issues with our mail. So sometimes we don't actually get them on Tuesday because forever they would always come on Tuesday. And then when they actually come on Tuesday, it's like, oh, oh my, <laughs> we actually get to see them, you know, in print. But most of the time I go online on Tuesdays and I check out to see what's going on the next week. So to me, that's super important to look at stuff, right? I'm going to go back to share my screen again where we left off. And come on. Oh, there, whoops, I went too far. So weekly market ads. Excuse me, Beth. Oh, can you not see it? Um, we see um, nope. there's a gray box covering your um, title and on the right-hand side. Yep, hold on, let's try it again. How's that? Um, it's still there. Okay, hold on one second here. Beth, it's the chat box and the share box. You have to move them out. No, it shouldn't even be there. Hold on one sec. Hold on. Oh boy, I'm sorry. Give me a second here. Okay, let's try it again. And let me go back to present. Now you can see it? Yes. Okay, back to the market ads. So I get the market ads digitally. And I'm gonna share a little story back in, and I talked about this a little earlier, back in November, Amazon Fresh had coupons where if you spent $20, you got $10 off. And I will tell you every single week I have looked for that coupon ever since. And Wednesday, I saw that coupon and I got so excited. <laughs> And you know where we went Thursday? We went to Amazon Fresh. <laughs> and when we leave here today, that's where we're going again. You can use it once a day. Back in November, we were able to use it one per time in the store. So we went in several times a day, me and my dad, and we stocked up. And, and I will tell you, when I look at all the different market ads and, and where to shop and what they have every week, um, like sometimes pavilions, I know it sounds really funny, um, because it's supposed to be a little bit more high end can be cheaper than bonds, especially the locations by me. And I've noticed that from location to location, sometimes the prices are very different. Um, Target has that, which drives me crazy. So if I shop at Manhattan Beach, it's about, I don't know, 20 to 50 cents cheaper on all the items than if I shop in Culver City. And, and I know in Santa Clarita, from both of the Targets, the prices are different. I don't know why, but they are. And, and so sometimes, you know, is it worth going or not? So when we make a plan of, of all our stuff, and I'll show you kind of what my lists look like, we, we figure out where we're going to go in that direction so that we don't waste as much gas because we all know what gas is and gas is supposed to hit $8 this month. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we save as much as we can. As I tell you, it's not fun, right? So you can kind of see, I have my list on the left and, it, and it's kind of an ongoing list every week. And sometimes I cross off if I don't get something. And then I realized, um, actually this morning I'm out of creamer. So I have to add creamer to my list <laughs> after I was making a cup of coffee. And, you know, I asked my dad yesterday, I said, so what are you in the mood for this week? 
you know, and two of the things is burgers and meatloaf. And then I kind of add veggies and things to go with it. And, and I, I try really hard that when we go to the market that I kind of keep to the list, but like we all say there's impulse buying. And sometimes I buy stuff that we don't always need, you know, it's just what it is. Right. So I have kind of a, a basic list that I kind of use of a lot of things that we do use in the house and dairy, fruits and vegetables, bulk items, proteins. And I kind of have that separated on my sheet where I keep adding stuff. And then of course there's the miscellaneous section, which that's my impulse buy. That's my sweets. Those are my special little things. My Yasso frozen yogurt that I am totally addicted to. There are hundred calories and they taste absolutely fabulous. Yeah. When I came home from Tuesday from the red dress event that we did, my dad says to me, I have something to show you. And at first I was kind of nervous, like, uh-oh, what did I do <laughs> kind of thing? And on the market lists, they were on sale. They were from, normally they're like $6 a box for four and they were on sale for $2.97. And all I can tell you is Wednesday when the sale started and it said max five, I did buy five. I am gonna share that. And in the freezer, you know, we have certain things that we always keep, you know, like I stock up on ground chicken, ground turkey. I have a turkey breast in there. I have stew meat. I have a whole chicken. I have halibut. I have salmon. I have everything, you know, a whole bunch of stuff stored. And then we have a shelf that we have bagels that we froze individually when we want them. And then we have, which shares the shelf with the yes. That's the hardest part. And I will share and it's kind of a goofy thing to say. So I have these three boxes, <laughs> this is sharing a little bit about an obsession that are their cardboard boxes that I have in there that came from like from Costco where you buy the big box, but it holds 18 at a time. So I could put 18 in a box. So we have three boxes of them. And I remember my dad saying, we have that much in there. I go, yeah, we have 48 right now. So we're good for a while because <laughs> we just replenished everything. But it's one of those things that it's not going to go bad. It's going to be fine in the freezer. We're going to get to it. And I know that when we see stuff on sale, that it's okay to throw it in the freezer. I mean, some things don't freeze as well. Butter freezes well, you know, um, garlic freezes well. So you don't want it to go bad. Flour you could freeze. I don't have room for that. But there are certain things, nuts you could put in the freezer so you don't so they don't go to waste, right? So when you're going shopping, there's name brands, there's generic brands. So is there a difference? Does it make a difference? Is one better than the other? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I'm gonna say that. I have experimented. There are plenty of brands that I absolutely adore that are the generic versus the regular. And one of the things that I look at, as you can see in here, I have low sodium, no salt. Um, some things have salt, they do. Um, even when it comes like to tomato paste, I will say that it has only 20 grams of sodium. So it's not terrible. And it boosts, it thickens up stuff. It does all kinds of wonders. And that's an item that you don't have to feel guilty using the whole thing at times. Cause if you, you put it right back on with the lid on it, if you have that type of uh, can opener, which I do, and it seals it back up. And then I put it in the refrigerator till I need it again. And it's usually good for about two weeks in the fridge. So my next question to everybody is how many people actually look or decide when you're going shopping to do name brands versus generic brands? Like, do, does, does the brand mean a difference to people? And then I'm gonna have Nicole help us out here. So as you guys are writing, oh, there she goes, <laughs> ready to start. There's, yeah, there's um, only only me. Right. Um, yes, I buy brand only. Yes, a lot generic and some name brand. Sometimes I like Bush's veggie baked beans. You can see my can right in the back. 
some brands are just, they just taste better. And some are just fine. Like I'm going to say, you know, the Sprouts brand or the Target brand, I've been happy with them. They taste fairly good. It's what I like. But, you know, then there's some brands that I absolutely have to have the brand because it tastes so much better. Sometimes the combination of the spices or whatever it is, is what it is, right? We have mixture. I do have yeah. my favorites, not too many generic, mostly generic. I look at both and buy both sometimes, but not always. I find some generic are just as good. Very good. So. When I go to the market, some markets have a section where you can buy your beans, legumes, your rice, your spices, you know, by the weight, where you don't have to buy packages. Now, grains and pasta, sometimes, you know, they come packaged. How much do we buy? Do we buy extra? How do we store them when we get home, right? So most of the stuff, even if it comes packaged, I take everything out and I put it into my storage containers. And I have learned many, many years ago, and I had to think about, God, I felt like, how long ago was it? So back in the um, mid nineties, the late nineties, um, I sold Tupperware and I did it because there were certain things that I absolutely wanted to have. And I did it for I don't know, about eight to 10 years. I sold Tupperware part-time, sometimes full-time. I really enjoyed it. And it was the first time where I had an opportunity where I got to cook in front of a crowd and share all what I love to do with cooking, right? And one of the things that I remember that has stayed with me and will always stay with me, it's like sometimes you can't unsee things. And there was <laughs> one of those things that is hard to unsee. So they were explaining of why Tupperware was so important, why you should take certain things out and not leave it in the packages, that you should remove your stuff that comes in paper. Plastic is a little different. Paper is a whole nother story. So if it comes in a cardboard box, it comes paper, like flour comes in a, you know, a harder piece of paper. Pasta, rice usually comes in cardboard boxes. So what do you do? Um, expiration dates. So while I'm talking, if you guys can put in the chat, how many people look at expiration dates on those items? So what I learned is things generally that come from other countries that are made in cardboard. When they come here, they're already packaged. It's not like they come here and then they package them. And sometimes within our country also, things, this is kind of what happens. It's the, called the cardboard box weevil. It's evil, it's evil, evil. We don't want to ever see that in our cabinets because once you have that problem, it never goes away. So when you take your flour and you get it from the market and I put it right into a Tupperware container, as you can see, my cabinets have lots of containers. Most of them are labeled and I take it out and I put it in there. Now, if you leave it in the container, it will extend its shelf life. So flour generally is about six months from production, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, depending on if it's organic or the type of flour, right? Because we have different types of flour. It'll prolong it. So I tend to put it in there. Now I did keep one out to show you guys that I just bought where it comes in the little brown bag of flour, it's potato flour. So if I don't take it out and I, or I don't use it pretty much within a few months, these little weevils will start to come out and we don't want those at all. So it also allows me to buy less or if I need to buy more, but it allows me to store it and stack it. It looks nice and neat. It's very organized, right? So the main thing that I want everybody to understand is that you don't want to have any of those problems in your kitchen because it will waste all the food that you just saved when you bought everything. So you don't want to have to go through that whole process. 
Trust me, you do not. I will tell you, I have opened up a bag of flour, and this was years ago, that I would store in a Ziploc container. At least it was contained to the Ziploc container, but I had them. And I just, it's like one of those things I say that you can't unsee, opening up a bag of food that is just contained with bugs. So we don't wanna ever have that again. So I'm very careful on how I store things, where I store things, making sure it's really cool. If you have a heating vent, you don't want it to go too near because it'll, it will, instead of extend the expiration, it'll quicken it up. So if you're near a heater and it's a little warm in there, instead of six months, it might be three months. And then again, you don't have food that lasts as long. We have multiple people oh. that said that they check dates. Yes. Um, yes. We do have a question. Yes. Do you, do you check dates and mark your containers with the dates? Absolutely. So I have, and, and it's kind of hard to see, but on top, and then I usually have it on the back where I put a post-it note. So I know when I purchase stuff. And some of them you can kind of see in the front where it's white. Um, and I'll change the labels. Sometimes I just put it right on the back because that is the most important thing. You don't want something sitting in there. And then of course, it's like the stuff that gets to the back that you don't use as often sometimes. It's what happens where you're like, oops. <laughs> and then we have a, I always check dates and use glass or BPA free containers. My daughter, mm -hmm. a nurse checks my cupboards often. <sighs> That's what we have to do. We do. So with basic ingredients that I have in, in my cabinets, like flour, oat, I have um, dry milk, I have chocolate chips, gotta have chocolate chips. It's like one of those things, because sometimes that's, you know, gotta have. Sometimes you just gotta munch them, right? And I have dried fruit, I have dried nuts, I have all kinds of different things that I, I keep, but I have small containers of stuff. And sometimes, you know, just because there's room in the container doesn't mean you have to fill it but it'll keep it fresh, right? So with these ingredients, these basic ingredients, these are things that I make, right? I love making rolls. I love the one on the left is actually a, a broccoli leek croquette. And on the right, those are pretzel rolls. My next little quote here. The only time to eat diet food is while you're waiting for the steak to cook one of the quotes by Julia Child. And just because it says it's diet doesn't mean it's healthy. And I kind of said that earlier also. So it's quantity. It's not necessarily what the ingredients are that makes it so where you can't eat it or what you do. What I try to do is focus on items that allow me to get multiple uses in the kitchen, right? One of the main things that I love to do, it's, it's kind of like um, a challenge, I'm going to call it for myself, roast chicken. So we all love roast chicken, baked chicken, rotisserie chicken. Sometimes we buy it from the market, Costco, wherever. Sometimes we just make a roast chicken, right? And what do we do after the second night that we don't get tired of eating the same meal over and over again? So what I like to do is to reincorporate a chicken into different dishes. And it allows me to have multiple uses from the same protein that I cooked once and I incorporate into stuff for a couple nights. And, and I will say when I have a roast chicken for two of us, and this is for two people. So if you have more than two people, you know, divide it by another two. So it'd be for four people, right? So I can get six, sometimes eight meals out of a roast chicken which if you're a family of four, it would be like three or four meals. So different things that I get from a roast chicken, chicken broth. So the first night we eat chicken, the second night, second day, morning, I take the carcass and I shred the chicken. So I have it already portioned. So the part that I take is the bones and part of the meat and I make a soup. And then from there, I'll make different kinds of a soup. So I might make a, a chicken and rice soup. I might make a chili soup. I might make um, all these different things that you never know, right? Sometimes I do matzo balls. Sometimes we do pierogi. I throw all kinds of stuff in there. Take the, the regular shredded chicken, right? And incorporate it into milk. There's different flavors, different nationalities. We have orange chicken, a salsa chicken, an Asian chicken barbecue, enchiladas, 
there's all kinds of different things that I can incorporate so that I have different flavors and then we're not tired of the chicken. But yes, we do get tired of the chicken sometimes. So sometimes in the middle, I'll throw in a meatloaf or I'll throw in fish to break up. But at least I have different flavors and I know that I'm not wasting any part of that chicken. And usually when I make a chicken, that one chicken will give me about 12 cups of broth. So when I'm making rice, I'll use the chicken broth to flavor my rice. Because when you add water to things, all you're doing is watering it down. You're not giving it flavor. And so by adding that chicken broth to your rice, you're giving it another level of, level of flavor. So, I mean, even when you make mashed potatoes, you know, in, instead of milk, sometimes I'll add the chicken broth and it's less fattening, it's less sodium because even milk does have fat and salt. Even non-fat milk, you might lose the fat, but you still, you gain actually more salt. So what other things do you do? So here's kind of an assortment of what we ate pretty much in the last two weeks. <laughs> I went through and to share all the different little things that we've done with that same chicken. Ground meat is another thing. So it could be chicken, it could be beef, it could be turkey, pork, lamb. There's all these different things that you can do with that same ground meat. Sometimes I'll make a batch of ground meat, you know, a pound or two pounds at one time, and then I'll divide it into stuff. Like the other night I made burgers, but do we really want burgers for four nights? No. So what I'll do is I will make the burgers for tonight, and then I will separate some of the meat and I will take it into meatballs, which meatballs taste really good. We actually had um, turkey meatballs last night over rice and I put some bell peppers and tomatoes and mushrooms and leeks and I used my um, tomatilla salsa that I made and I put it right on top of it. So there's, you know, there's different things that you can do with that same ground meat to change the flavor, you know, to do that. Now, my next question is, is when it comes to recipes or I guess substitutions, how many of us realize that when it says ground beef, that you really don't have to use ground beef on a recipe, that you can interchange it with any other meat. And sometimes you can even interchange it for the shredded meat. So while you guys are answering that question to realize about substitutions and recipes, I am going to go to the next one, talk about vegetables, and then we'll come back to substitutions. So I like to go to the farmer's market a lot. We have a fabulous one here. We have actually, I'm going to say about five where I live. Um, but last week I went with Colleen and we went to the farmer's market in New Hall. And I'm going to say I bought some absolutely fabulous produce. We bought um, mini zucchini and um, some other vegetables that I, carrots, beautiful yellow carrots that I couldn't wait to use them and stuff. But the amount that I got was a lot more. So I've actually used them in several meals. Now, what I've realized is when you go to the market, you always see that section of pre-chopped stuff. Don't, don't ever go there. I remember um, before I moved back home, every week I would have dinner with my dad and he would go to the market and he would buy chopped, the, the already, you know, chopped and sliced fresh fruit. We had a watermelon, cantaloupe, pineapple, whatever it was. And, and I realized how much money he was wasting in a way that we could chop it ourselves. You know, buying a pineapple, which I will say I've had some fabulous pineapple this year. And most of the time they're $2.50 each, $2.99 each. And it, it allows us to have about six portions depending on if you get the mini pineapple or the regular pineapple, because sometimes some of the markets for the same price, it's kind of small. 
And then we had, you know, and then of course Costco, it's like three times the size of the one that you get like at Fonds or pavilions. But so, you know, it extends the amount of portions. What I have learned is that why would I spend $6 for a very small portion of pineapple when I can chop it up myself, right? And when you buy it pre-chopped, it doesn't last as long, right? You got to eat it tonight. Whereas when you chop it yourself, because it's a lot more fresh, especially buying it from the farmer's market, because they pick it today, they picked it yesterday, they picked it the day before, it's going to have a longer time, a, shelf, a longer shelf life, where you're not going to feel guilty that you're wasting as much. So any answers yet? Um, I use ground turkey or yes. chicken for any beef recipe. And one that says, uh, yes, I, love it. I pulled out my recipe books and really upped my cooking game. <laughs> and it's important. It's important to give us variety and to eat healthy. It's, it's what's so important, right? And these were some of the vegetables that I got last week. Um, beautiful cauliflower, um, little patty pan squash and carrots. And sometimes when I don't have my plan, which is really bad, I then have to alter my plan, which is not a bad thing, but then I have to think about it so that I don't waste other stuff in there. And, and I'm gonna say that cauliflower, the squash and the carrots, that if you can't get to certain vegetables, even corn, what I like to do with corn is I like to shuck it and then put them in freezer bags. And then they taste absolutely just like you pick them because you're freezing them quicker. Or when you buy frozen vegetables, what happens is the same thing with like buying it at the market. It's not necessarily always the freshest vegetables, right? So that's one of the things that I love to do is have lots and lots of fresh vegetables. So sometimes my meals will have more vegetables than it will have the protein, which again is healthier because I'm staying away from the fat, the saturated fat, I'm not gonna have sodium because most proteins have a lot of salt. So I tend to add more vegetables in my recipes than on a normal recipe that you would get sometimes. Well, this kind of comes to the end of my presentation. We'll open it up for some questions in a minute. So chocolate comes from cocoa, which is a plant. Therefore, chocolate counts as salad, right? <laughs> I have this horrible addiction to chocolate. And I'm sure we all have some kind of an addiction to some kind of food that's not always good for us. Sometimes, you know, when you're at the market or even when I have it in the kitchen and then I walk past like I have a little container of M&Ms, I just say to myself, it's calling my name and I just can't resist. And I open up the container and I take a handful. <laughs> and sometimes that's what I do. And I snack sometimes more than I should, but that's what it is, right? So do we have any questions as we wrap up? And I'll share me and how to get a hold of me, my website, Follow me all over social media. I'm on Patreon where you can get newsletters. And I think the most important thing is to pursue your cooking and baking passions and you'll see all the wonderful things that you can create. So any questions? Um, we have some uh, agreement that chocolate is equal to a salad, which uh, is a good addiction to have. <laughs> Uh, we do have a question. Um, fresh meats have sodium, question mark? Yes, they do. Everything has salt and fat, saturated fat. So when we buy like ground chicken, ground beef, we tend to look for like ground chicken. I buy the chicken breast. It's 99% fat free. There's a brand of beef that I get from the farmer's market. Um, they also have a location out in Simi Valley. And I know there's another um, beef vendor that is in New Hall that carries the 99% fat free. And, and what I do is in order to make it moist is I add chicken broth, beef broth, vegetable broth that I make myself to make sure that it has the less sodium as possible. It's back in um, December, my dad um, didn't feel well. 
and we realized that he was retaining fluid and the doctors changed his diet from 1500 milligrams of sodium to a thousand. So we've had to cut salt even more for the last three months. So everything has salt. Like I said, even milk, even an egg, an egg white. So we use a lot of egg whites. They have 70 milligrams of salt for one, which is a, like a fourth a cup of an egg white, which is an egg white, right? Or a whole egg. So everything, everything you can imagine. If it doesn't have salt, it has fat or it has sugar. You're gonna not be able to get away from all of it. Any other questions? I don't see any in the chat. If somebody wants to unmute and ask your question, feel free. Stop my sharing. Well, if that's it, I want to thank everybody for joining us. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is beth at vineyardcooking.com. And I'm more than welcome to help anybody. And now oh, I, back to Phyllis. Yes. And I would like to thank you so much, Beth, because we've learned a lot about eating healthy and uh, how to shop and all those good things. So thank you so much. Thank you, and Beth. I, You're yes. welcome. So I would like also to ask you to mark your calendars because our next Life Forward workshop is scheduled for Saturday, March the 26th, our usual time, 10 to 11.15. And the title is Job Seekers, Improve Your Resume, Job Search, and Interview Skills. It's going to be presented by Israel Serna. He is the speaker and trainer at Grow with Google. So thank you everyone again for joining us today and check our website, our Life Forward page and see all the workshop recordings as referred to earlier. And uh, we've also put information on there about 2021 taxes. So you might find that to be a benefit. So um, the, as said previously this will be recorded and added to the list on our website so everybody have a great day thank, thank you guys you. and don't forget thank we're going to upload it to the youtube page so follow us and subscribe and like our videos <laughs> yes right. thanks beth, beth. Do, double do duty at, <laughs> do you shop at all these beth i do not we do not have an all